I didn't want to be like a leaf floating down a stream and just kind of bumping the edges of the river and going wherever the flow took me. I wanted to man the boat and figure out what I was going to do all alone in this next phase of my life. That's Stacy Shiflett, and it's safe to say that she leads a bold life, always pushing against expectations. Stacy graduated high school early, built a construction business, worked for a large consulting firm, and even ran a llama farm while raising a family. But when her marriage ended after 28 years, Stacy was thrown. I think that it really shook me to the core, and it took me a while to realize that. On this episode, Stacy takes us through her post-divorce reinvention and how it inspired her to found Modern Consciousness, a company that offers programs to help people cut through the noise to live the life they want. With her step-by-step -step Elevate Your Life program, Stacy helps people make small adjustments for big impact. I'm a strong believer that everything is actually within you. We know the answers, we just don't know the questions to ask, and we don't know how to connect with ourselves at a deeper level to get to the true answers. Welcome to The Breakout, a show about smashing through life's little boxes and forging your own path. I'm Dr. Carrie Ulrich. And I'm Kelly Gunther. Carrie and I are people and change experts and best friends. We've spent more than 25 years helping organizations navigate change and get the best out of their people. Come on, we know change is hard, but staying the same can even be harder. On The Breakout, we prove that you can escape expectations and best of all, we show you how. All right. Hi, Stacy. Thank you so much for joining us on The Breakout. What did you break out of? You know, I've broken out so many times. I don't really know how to, <laughs> I don't really know how to capture that in one in one phrase because I kind of tend to reinvent myself about every 10 years anyway. So, mm. what is your latest? If you do it every 10 years, what was your latest breakout? Probably my divorce. Let's go with that because that really, after 28 years of marriage, that threw me a little bit, right? So that is really what propelled me full on into personal development work and, and getting me to where I am today. I had a lot of successes prior to that. Um, I had a successful company running at that time, but it really knocked me down. You know, it really, uh, it, it really knocked me down. So I broke out of the box of thinking that I was doing everything that I should be doing post-divorce and realizing that I needed to intentionally and with a lot of specificity create my future. What was your life like before the shakeup of the divorce? I mean, it was good. You know, I've had hardships like everybody else. I, you know, my first son died and I managed my parents' health issues and my mother's Alzheimer's. I've done a lot of things. You know, I think self-actualization and actually self-management has mm -hmm. been a powerful theme throughout my whole life. I've always been bold. You know, even when I was a kid, you know, I, I came home one day to my parents and said, hey, I got a job, but I need you to sign this paper. I was 16 years old. They didn't want me to work. Uh, they got a call from the principal one day. My mother said, principal called. I said, no. Yeah. Yeah, he said you walked into his <laughs> office today and said that uh, you hated high school and you wanted to graduate this year or you were going to quit. I said, well, yeah, that's right. So I graduated that year. You know, that was at 17 years old. So I have apparently done this all my life. It's not new yeah. to me. So you've been this, this bold person and there was this big shakeup. And so the shakeup's the divorce. And so the question I have for you is a lot of people's marriages end, but their lives continue on the same trajectory. That didn't happen for you. So why did you shake things up so much? I wasn't happy. My business was doing very well. And it was a construction company, by the way, in, in D.C. We built four and five story apartment buildings. But I couldn't see my future. You know, I think when I was younger, I was always working towards something. Mm -hmm. 
And you figure when you're married to someone for so long that you're probably working toward retirement and spending time together, correct? Yeah, yeah. So um, that was gone. That was no longer an option. Mm. And I just had to make a very intentional decision that uh, I didn't want to be like a leaf floating down a stream and just kind of bumping the edges of the river and going wherever the flow took me. I wanted control of the oars, right? I wanted to Mm -hmm. man the boat, as it were, and figure out what I was going to do all alone in this next phase of my life. So I just did that. Wow. So you've written a book and designed a program to help people make changes in themselves. So tell me first why that even came to you. You have this divorce, you're in construction, which is not Focus on personal development, focus on creating your four to five story apartment buildings. What got you into the personal development space? That would be a gift that I received through meditation. That was the the idea and the concept for this company, which I resisted probably for about two years at least. I just kept saying, no, I, I'm not your girl. I'm not your girl, but it wouldn't leave me alone. Um, I was very resistant to start a company in a business model that I had no experience with at all. And not that I haven't done that before, but... um, I was going to say, llamas, (laughs) construction. Yes. So what was different different about this one, Stacey? Because, yeah, you have started stuff that you didn't know about before. Yeah, I really think that I lost a lot of my confidence with the divorce, quite frankly. I think that it really shook me to the core. And it took me a while to realize that because of, at first I was quite confident, right? I can, I survived the death of my son. I can get through this. I'm going to buy a house. Yeah. I have a company. I'm going to do this. I had, you know, I took a lot of action. But as my personal development journey grew and I grew, and then this idea was gifted to me, Finally, one day here in in Sarasota, I was meditating one day and I was like, okay. And when I say it wouldn't leave me alone, I mean, it would not leave me alone. It consumed my thoughts daily. What are some of the thoughts? So you're you're meditating and... Oh, just about modern consciousness and the, the aspects of modern consciousness and, you know, and how it flows. There's four aspects of modern consciousness, you know, from automaton to awakening soul to illuminated adept to a transformer and what all those mean and... You know, I just kept capturing information as it flowed through me, but I just couldn't get to the place of making a decision to actually start a business. I was obtaining certifications, but I was very resistant to do it. And the day that I was meditating here in in, uh, Sarasota, it's like, just tell me what to do. You're not leaving me alone. So I need, give me some guidance. What's the next best step? So the... Guidance that I got was just one word, which happens with me sometimes. I just get one word and it was right. And I said, ah, okay. You've told me that before and I've written a lot of stuff, but this time I said, I surrender. And to me, that was more like write something for public consumption, right? And then within an hour or two after surrendering to that, I got a text message from a friend of mine that said, hey, I've got a friend in Canada that's a publisher, and she's got a chapter left open in a collaboration book that she's doing with Les Brown. Would you like to join the project? Oh, my gosh. So as soon as I was able to close my jaw, because, you know, obviously it dropped to the floor and I looked to the sky and I'm like, oh, yeah, you really have a sense of humor, (laughs) Um, (laughs) as, uh, you know, as the universe often does. But I went ahead and joined the project and it was in the throes of doing that first book, which is Ignite the Hunger in You, I realized that I could launch a company in conjunction with the book. So that's what I did. What I appreciate of Stacy's background is that she's done a lot of different things. So she isn't just kind of this uh, one trick pony and she's tried different things. She's been bold. Agreed. I think just her incredible self-awareness, there's been a lot of things that have happened in her life which have been quite unfortunate. And so she could have chosen to go in a very different direction, keep her head down with work, but she chose to really 
as she calls it, reinvent herself. She's been so bold and taken all these risks. And I just love that she took her divorce and turned it into something where she helps herself and then she can help other people. Before the divorce, were you into meditation? Did you do a lot of it or was this a late start for you? This was a late start for me. Yeah, the, the spiritual journey was a late start for me. I've always been intuitive and I did a lot of classes. I did a lot of reading. And I mean, there might be days where I would, you know, just meditate for hours in figuring out how to quiet my body, quiet my mind, feel the energy moving through my body, those sorts of things. Wow. I'm impressed I can barely do it for five minutes, Stacey. And then I'm like, I got to go do some stuff. So tell me about the program then that you developed to help people then make these changes in themselves and become more conscious. Yes, I've got a program called Elevate Your Life. And you know, what I find is that although we evaluate and assess a lot of different things in our lives, we don't ever really look at all of it together and how it all affects other areas. I call them life domains. And essentially what we do is we work together to do a full life assessment. And that's, that's no judgment, just kind of where are you now in all of these areas, right? What's working for you? What isn't? So on and so forth. And I think that it's really critical to get a clear understanding of where we are currently, right? And, and that's a lot of what I went through in my own process as well is really understanding. It, it wasn't until I really understood where I was and that I didn't want to stay there. I didn't want to stay in that box, right, that I broke out of it. And this is a way to do that, to elevate your life. And then the second component of that program is defining your aspirations, which is also a really interesting exercise because, again, we're not accustomed to doing that. It's difficult to people to really say what they aspire to be and to use your terminology again, to break out of the box of all of our learning and beliefs and what society has taught us, what our cultures have taught us is valuable to really connect with ourselves. You know, I really believe that our biggest asset is, is peace of mind. It's one, it's our biggest personal asset and we get there first by educating ourselves and gaining knowledge. But then the real trick is not only implementing, but actually embodying what we've learned to really transition our lives fully. The rest of the program, there's architecting the bridge where we say, okay, here's where you are, here's where you wanna be. And we identify the gaps. And the interesting thing in this component of the work is this is where the themes really begin to show up because we might be experiencing something in one area of our life, and we think it's limited to that area, but it's almost always showing up somewhere else, but it's disguised, mm -hmm. right? It looks like something mm -hmm. completely different. Mm -hmm. And uh, you probably do this when you go through analyses with your business clients, right? So after we do that, we design a high-level plan, and of course, we prioritize. I'm a strong believer that everything is actually within you. We know the answers, we just don't know the questions to ask, and we don't know how to connect with ourselves at a deeper level to get to the true answers. So we kind of have to go through these layers, right? So that's architecting the bridge. And then we do activation, which is really some practical steps to move you in the direction of your aspirations. And then we fully align that with your daily activities so that you truly begin to embody that new behavior. And the new mindset, it's really a mindset behavior is part of it. But I find it so magical. And it happens to me still all the time when I experience something and I notice that either my thoughts about it or how I reacted about it or the language that I choose to use to deal with that is radically different for me now than it would have been, you know, a decade or two decades ago. And that's the beauty of the work. Yeah. I love what you said, Stacy, and that taking that assessment and seeing where you're at. And we, Kelly and I like to say, you're stepping on the scale, right? You got to know where you're at. But that language is so important. 
like striking some words from your vocabulary or adding words into your vocabulary really does change the way you think about it. The way I try not to say busy, because I just don't, that's very externally focused. I'm so busy. There's nothing I can do about it. Like I can't do it. I'm so busy. I don't want to say that anymore. That's a distancing. And so, but it does help change your mindset around it by the words you use. It really does. And that's what I find, you know, the automaton, the first aspect, that's what that is. It's, uh, I find that so many people, it's the busyness of our lives. that is the momentum that pushes them forward, right? We have completely lost track within the framework of how busy and how committed our lives are to the activities that we made decisions to commit to, that's what moves us forward instead of intentional choice. Right. And we always have a choice and we forget we have a choice. And often what we do is with such good intentions, but the outcome isn't producing what we want to produce and we don't understand why. Exactly. I love that. It just that motion just propels you without thinking, without thinking Mm -hmm. about it, without realizing that you don't have to do it. And why am I doing it and asking all these great questions. The breakout comes to you from a Brachi group. We offer coaching and consulting to help you dig into change. Here's what we know. Only about 10% of us are really self aware. But 90% of us think we are. Without self-awareness, improvement is tough because if you don't know what box you're in, you can't break out of it. That's where we come in. We've got a soft spot for people itching to forge a fresh path. The high flyers who need to be nudged out of career ruts. Teams who are looking to become more aligned. And yes, even those bold souls who've occasionally worn the jerk badge. Connect with us at abracigroup.com. So Stacey, who are your clients and what do you find that they need from you? You know, I'll say, first of all, it's not for people that are perfectly happy with their status quo, right? Yeah. I I work mostly with women and, you know, it's really when you have decided that you're not particularly happy with the status quo of your life or you can't quite see the trajectory of your future and, And oftentimes that means you've experienced a big upheaval as I did with divorce. And it's when that little voice starts to whisper to you, you know, you have it all, but yet you really don't feel like you have it all. And you know, deep within yourself that there should be, and that there is the possibility of experiencing a lot more with life. I choose to not work with women who are in the throes of crisis. There's a lot of work to be done there. That's not the work that I do. I've been through those phases myself. Find someone to support you lovingly through that. I prefer to work with people that are a little on the other side of that, have regained their footing, have had some exposure to some personal development and are familiar with some of the basic concepts, but they don't know how to actually integrate that into their lives. And I find that that's what happens so often with personal development. You know, we go to, we read books, we go to seminars, you know, we get excited, we do all these things and we collect all this knowledge but we don't know how to activate that knowledge into our lives. And I guide them back to themselves. Yeah. I love that. I know Kelly, as soon as you said action and activate, because that's what Kelly and I talk about so many times is how important that action is. Because if I keep reading the same, not the same book, but I could read 10 books about it. But if I never take a step, I never do anything. Have I really changed anything? If a tree falls in a forest, right? (laughs) Um, But Kelly and I are so about, action, but to your point, Stacey, how do we have that balance of thoughtful action? Well, it's it's a helpful step in making the next step because they're ready for a change, but they maybe don't know what that change looks like or what the next step should be. So kudos to you for creating the safe space for them to be able to begin that work because it's not easy. Um, I can only imagine. It's not easy work. And we've all been through it at different times and stages and seasons of our lives. But it's easier when you have someone there to fully support you mm-hmm. without judgment, 
and to help you see what it is that you really want, right? I think we all have our own unique happiness formula. My formula isn't the same as yours, Kelly, or yours, Carrie, or, you know, it's not prescribed by anyone but you. So let's figure out what that is. Good for you. I love just your um, your presence to a very calming, very soothing which I think is what people need when they're going through work like this is the non-judgment because I would imagine that they've put a lot of judgment on themselves. So, you know, you say that you keep seeing the same thing showing up in people's lives. What are some of those themes that you've seen play out? You know, we sabotage ourselves in, in so many ways. Negative self-talk is, is huge. And, you know, it really disrupts us. It's, you know, it's funny. I, I, have, I have one little story of someone that was very irritated with her weight. You know, she wasn't really doing anything about it. I wouldn't really say overweight, but, you know, had gone up in size, middle-aged. And, you know, I was like, buy bigger pants, right? It takes me back that movie, Julia Roberts and Eat, Pray, Love, right? When they went to eat the pizza and she's like, we're going to go buy... But it's like, just buy bigger pants. It doesn't mean you're going to not get into smaller pants, but, and these are sometimes the simplest tweaks. What you find out is when you, you know, when you're wearing that pair of pants that are too tight all day long, you are mentally telling yourself all day long that you're fat. That's not healthy, <laughs> right? So sometimes it's the simplest things. Another woman was getting really frustrated. Her husband was retired and she was still working in a job that she loved to do. And she was just becoming frustrated on her way home from work because she knew that there was going to be tension when she got home. And they have a very great relationship. He was just happy to see her. Now, she's been with people all day. She didn't necessarily want to entertain him, too, you know, when she got home. So <clears throat> what worked for her was how about you guys decide on this ahead of time? You know, let him know, you know, Monday's is kind of a bad day for me. You know what you could really do to help me out on Monday? When I come home on Monday, I could use some extra care. I could use a little extra space. Maybe you could cook dinner. But Tuesday night, we'll go do X, Y, Z. Or this weekend, we'll go do. So it's a small tweak, but it's not anything that they thought to do. And it made a huge difference in their relationship. You know, they didn't have a fight in the evenings when she got home. Mm -hmm. I think what's so helpful and illuminating is just the... The suggestions come from a place of love and making small suggestions, not saying, well, change your life and restructure your entire week. It's just Mondays, I need a little self-care. And now that's leading to an, a much more empowered relationship, I'm sure, for both of them. It did. It really did have a significant impact, yeah. And I loved her. <laughs> then buy bigger pants. Mm -hmm. Like, not everything has to be a giant thing. Where, well, you got to meditate. I would meditate about that for the next 10 hours over the next 10 days and figure it out. No, just fucking buy a pair of bigger pants because she's so right that if you're wearing something uncomfortable, you will just think about it all day. Like, well, see, I'm fat. I'm fat. Mm -hmm. I can't wear it. I can't like, and that negative self-talk on those things, it's really powerful. No, I agree with you completely. I was just thinking our, the tagline for this podcast should be, Fuck the tight pants. Say no to tight pants. Just say no to tight pants, yeah. It's just so practical. And, you know, there's a part of just, you're accepting yourself for who you are, where you are in that moment. It is small things. And I think that's what makes it possible for people to see the future self. Because it always feels like I'm taking a boulder uphill. Um, and that I have to be at the end point right away when really it's incremental changes that can make the biggest difference. So what would you say you've learned from people that you've been working with? I think, you know, you just have to lead from the heart and need to listen and listen intently and keep your mind open. You know, that's what I, I guide my clients to, you know, look at things with open curiosity and, and with a lot of self-compassion and without self-judgment. 
It's really sitting back and listening and asking thoughtful questions, and it's encouraging them to get to that level of depth within themselves and to authentically share that because it takes that level of trust and vulnerability to really get down to what what the nugget is, right? What is the nugget there? Yeah, really powerful. And I wonder if there's something that you've learned about yourself as a result of, of guiding people through these workshops. Oh, I take myself through my own program. (laughs) (laughs) Is that part of the reinvention every 10 years? You know, the the program is not that old, but um, it hasn't been around that long. But yes, I've taken myself through it. And it's, it's very enlightening. And the biggest thing I've learned is just to stay keenly aware of, you know, my language, we mentioned that earlier, but my thoughts, right, just guard my thoughts and, and notice them, and redirect them gently. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing. And then I'm just a quirky person, my, the way my brain works, I am having an issue with a gate out here. And it's super heavy. It's beautiful. The previous owner spent a lot of money putting it up. Well, I live on a barrier island in southwest Florida. It's not supporting the weight of that gate, right? That fence. So every week that doesn't latch and I got to, anyway, all of this stuff. So, you know, I needed a permanent solution. So, you know, my training, this is natural for me now. For one, it's not my job to protect the previous owner's dream of this fence, I tried. I invested $1,000 with having people coming in and and trying to reset it. And then the other two things that were profound for me are twofold. And one is your foundation has to be strong enough to support the weight upon it. So that was one. But conversely to that, and I I think this is where I have grown so much, is it's not just that. The sands are shifting beneath that fence. We shift also. So we also have to be flexible to shift as our foundational beliefs and our foundational practices shift. And then we can correct the outside world. And I think I learned that also in in recovering from my divorce and healing from that, I would think that I had dealt with something and then I would be shocked, you know, something would get me, you know, (laughs) it would trigger me a year later and just some random thing. And I'd be like, oh my God, I already dealt with this. I already did it. So we're always learning and we're always refining, right? It's never over. And what I learned through that is as I healed and recovered and changed myself in positive ways, intentionally, the changes were intentional and not a reaction to the stress, just new layers show up, right? They mm-hmm. they show themselves and they come to the surface for an additional level of healing. So it doesn't trigger me anymore. It's more like, Huh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that before. And then I can choose to do with that what I want. You know, if I need to do a little healing, I do a healing. If I need to figure out what belief is under that, if I need to shift something, or if I just need to completely let it go. So it's a continual process. It never it never stops. And that's good because we continue to grow. It's that growth mindset that I think I'm most picking up And of course, the visual of, you know, the foundation of sand and that we need to be able to shift and make adjustments, even when we don't see it coming. For some of us who are highly structured, it's hard to be flexible and be willing to make adjustments. But I think what you have demonstrated is through your own personal story and journey that you are a survivor of everything that you've experienced through the loss of your first son, which I'm so sorry to hear, your divorce and, and things that still can continue to to come your way. So final question for you, Stacey. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a minute with someone who is stuck and they're looking to break out. What do you tell them? I guess I have a minute to speak. What would I tell them? Let's slow down. Let's breathe. Let's just stop, right? First of all, just 
Inhale, exhale, and let's just stop. Let's settle our nervous system down so that we can arrive at a place to actually do this and think about it logically, deeply, authentically, and, and get to the root of, you know, whatever it is. You know, if we're in a highly emotional state, we can't do a lot of work. We can nurture and love ourselves through that and support someone through that, but that's not really the time to make these big decisions. Mm, so beautiful. And I think something that really requires a lot of effort because it can be hard to just settle down, but really taking that conscious moment to stop and really think through and to give yourself that perspective is super helpful. I just am so grateful for you taking the time to speak with us. And I wish you nothing but success on your journey and as you help others on their journey. Thank you. Great to be here with both of you. Thank you, Stacey. That was our conversation with Stacey Shiflett, founder of Modern Consciousness. And this is The Breakout from Abrachi Group. At Abrachi Group, we specialize in coaching and consulting for brave new directions. Connect with us at abrachigroup.com. And don't forget to subscribe to The Breakout so you never miss a new episode. And make sure you're following us on Instagram at The Breakout Pod. I'm Kelly Gunther. And I'm Dr. Carrie Ulrich. See you next time. <laughs>